three Jameses that are known in the Bible, and there are theologians that will debate over which James was which. The first James is a disciple that I talked about several weeks ago, and that is James, who is the brother of John, the sons of Zebedee, and they figure very strong in the scriptures. I mean, they're right there wherever Jesus is. They're in that inner circle. They're close to Jesus. That's James, the son of Zebedee. The second James that we see is the brother of Jesus. He is the head of the church of Jerusalem, and he wrote the book James that, he, that we know his name by in the scriptures, the book of James. He is the author. The third James is the James that I'm going to talk to you about today, and he is known as James the Less. All the Bible tells us about James the Less is his name and that terminology that's attached to his name, James the Less. And we know a little bit about his family. We know that he was the son of Alphaeus. Does that sound familiar at all to you? Last Sunday, we talked about Matthew being the son of Alphaeus. And there is the idea that they could have been brothers. We don't know that for certain. We do know that Jesus uh, drew in brothers and a close-knit group to be his disciples. But we're uncertain about that. We do know in Mark, the 15th chapter, in the 40th verse, that James's mother is her name was Mary, and she was one of the women who prepared Jesus' body for burial. You read about these Marys that would be there at the moment of the crucifixion, and I think of her ministry, this mother, how she ministered to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we think of ministry sometimes as being the disciples and well-known, and there they are with their signs and wonders, but there's something about the ministry of this Mary that must have been right there for Mary, the mother of our Lord. And so we honor her today for what she did. Mark 16:1 refers to the terminology James the less. And in Greek, that terminology less actually means James the little. I don't know if I feel much better about that. It's like Stuart Little, you know? James the Little. Now, it could have had the connotation that he was little in stature. That is possible that James was James the little because he was little in stature. It's also possible, and we see it in some translations, that he is called James the younger. Could have meant that he was younger. Younger than whom? Younger than James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. It could mean that he's James the lesser in comparison with James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. Whatever it means, I want you to know that Jesus used an individual that was considered small or less in comparison with others. And he was one of the 12. And he was faithful to the end. And you may feel like you feel small at times. I know there are moments in which I feel small at times. In the ability to have the type of impact, perhaps, that we'd want to have. Maybe you feel small in this season of life. Maybe by comparison, you come out small and short and less. Whatever it would be in the comparison with another and their impact or, or who they are. But I want you to know, Jesus purposely chose James, who we refer to as the less, to be one of his disciples. And that encourages me today because it reminds me of those who serve faithfully and it doesn't matter to them whether they're known or not. There would be some in this church that serve in this church that would be embarrassed to come up here on this stage. They don't feel any need for it. What they're doing is they are giving their hearts and their service and their faithfulness to the Lord and that's all that matters. It's not about them, it's about Jesus. And they have a great sense of a check in their lives that they have that imbalance. Not everybody has that imbalance. And so we see with James that he's known as this James the less and this faithful individual. I'm going to ask that the team please come, our worship team. And I want to say this before we would assume with James that he was less an impact. I want you to hear a little bit about the signs that we would see of any and all apostles. They had to meet this, these signs or they would not have been apostles. And James the less was an apostle. We see it in 2 Corinthians in the 12th chapter, the 12th verse. I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. 
this James the Less performed signs, wonders, and miracles by the power of God. There was nothing little about who he was and his impact for the kingdom. In Hebrews 11, starting with the 33rd verse, we read about individuals whose names will not be known this side of heaven, but listen to what they did. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies, Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might ha gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. We do not know their name. What we do know is they were faithful and they were all about the kingdom of God. God.